Hello, and welcome back to the product launch of the Ethernet IOLINK Master. My name is Donia Silgalis, and I am the product manager responsible for this product. Today, we will be covering session two, so let's get started. In session one, we covered the following list of topics. An overview, what makes up an IOLINK system, device pinout, and key benefits. Now, in session two, we will switch over our focus to a new list of topics that include what are IOLINK devices supported at Pepperell and Fuchs? What are some key terms I should be familiar with on IOLINK? Parameterization with IOLINK, and how has the integrated web server been enhanced? Pepperell and Fuchs offers a wide range of intelligent sensors with an IOLINK interface. These range from photoelectric, light barriers, light grids, and distance sensors to ultrasonic sensors and inductive position measurement systems. All of these devices combine the advantages of IO-Link reviewed in session one, and more importantly, increase the efficiency of your plant processes. Now, let's discuss the first key term we should all get familiar with relating to IO-Link, an IODD file. An IODD file, input-output device description, is mandatory for any IO-Link device. This file is needed to provide further details about the device, specifically identification, communication characteristics, parameters, process data, and diagnostic data. Note, an IODD file is also useful by allowing you to interact with a device within the integrated web server, which we will cover later in the presentation. Another term we will need to know is the IOLM file. Note, an IOLM file is primarily needed when using the IOLINK device tool. The value of this file becomes more clear as we become more familiar with the capabilities of the IOLINK device tool. An IOLM file enables the tool to recognize our IOLINK master. This file is similar to an IODD file in that it provides an identity for the Pepperon Fuchs IOLINK master in the IOLINK device tool. So where can we find Pepperon Fuchs devices that support IOLINK? Begin by selecting Products, Industrial Communication, IO-Link and IO-Link devices. This brings you to the IO-Link product selector. Currently, Pepperell and Fuchs offers 461 IO-Link devices. This number will continue to grow as more IO-Link devices get released. The product selector breaks down the IO-Link devices into various categories. By selecting a category, you immediately see the display of devices supporting IO-Link in that category. With the continuous expansion, with the continuous expansion of IO-Link portfolio, Pepperell and Fuchs is paving the way for Industry 4.0. Pepperell and Fuchs currently offers 461 IO-Link devices. This list includes both version 1.0 and version 1.1 devices. This number will continue to grow as more IO-Link devices get released. With the continuous expansion of the IO-Link portfolio, Pepperell and Fuchs is paving the way for Industry 4.0. The IO-Link website provides a very handy tool for finding IODD files from any of the IO-Link suppliers of the IO-Link community. By selecting the IODD finder and clicking on the IODD finder, we immediately can enter in an IO-Link supplier. In our case, we will enter in Pepperell and Fuchs. Each IO-Link device manufacturer has their IODD files available for download from the website. 
A key benefit with IO-Link devices is the long list of parameters and diagnostics. With IO-Link, there are a variety of ways to configure these parameters or monitor the enhanced diagnostics. Two tools available from Pepper and Fuchs are SmartBridge and USB Master. SmartBridge is an IO-Link Bluetooth interface that enables IO-Link capable sensors and actuators to be monitored, parameterized, and controlled via the SmartBridge app. The app is installed on a conventional mobile device and communicates with the IO-Link Bluetooth interface via Bluetooth. The IO-Link USB Master is another device that can be used with Packware to configure parameters of your IO-Link device. In this launch, we introduce three new ways to parameterize IO-Link devices. The integrated web server, the IO-Link device tool, and the PLC. With SmartBridge and USB Master, you are limited to parameterizing a single device. However, with the IO-Link Master and its ability to connect multiple IO-Link devices, you now have the ability to perform parameterization on multiple devices connected to the IO-Link Master. This screen is a sneak peek into the IO-Link device tool that we will be speaking more about in Session 3. The immediate benefit of this tool is that it provides the user user interface screens. After connecting to a single or multiple IO-Link device, the IO-Link device tool clearly displays the large quantity of parameters and diagnostics available for the connected IO-Link devices. This particular slide shows some of the parameters displayed for the Pepper and Fuchs R100 sensor connected to port 1. The Ethernet IO-Link Master in this launch also has an integrated web server. However, one key change to the integrated web server is the introduction of a new port page. Note, this level of diagnostics was not available with the Ethernet I.O. discrete modules. So now, let's take a closer look at how the latest integrated web server allows access to the device directly through a web browser, making it possible to view detailed information about the connected I.O. link devices. Having launched the web browser, let's begin by entering in the IP address of our Ethernet I.O. link master. The first page that appears is the status page. Some observations on this page are the following. Ports 1 and 2 are configured for I.O. link. This is displayed by two solid green LEDs on each port. Another observation is the ability to monitor the status of the process data. As we put something in front of the sensor, we should see an immediate change in state of our sensor. And finally, having covered IO Link device pinout in session one, we can now further confirm pinouts using the integrated web server. As highlighted on this page, pin number four is sending the IO Link communications, and pin number two is the digital input. So let's move on to the ports page. The ports page enables continuous diagnostics and parameterization down to the sensor actuator level. In this case, we are monitoring the port details of port 1. In our case, we have port number 1 connected to an R100 sensor. The details of the R100 sensor are noted with the service data located in this area. Right below the service data is the process data. Once again, if we interrupt the sensor, we should see our process data changing from a 1 to 0 on the input data. Before we depart, I wanted to be sure you were aware of the number of ways you may connect with us here at Pepper and Fuchs. These include technical support, ask the expert, 
website, Twitter, and blogs. I encourage each of you to keep in touch on any questions or concerns you may have on Pepper and Fuchs products. Have a great day and thanks again for attending the webinar.